morning class. So I've put together some review questions for you for the trigonometry test. And I'm not suggesting that um, this is uh, complete coverage of everything we've done. Um, the one thing for sure that's not covered here are those um, word problems that involve right triangles. Um, but it is a very good sample of uh, the main topics that we've looked at. So the answers are right here at the bottom, but I thought I'd spend a few minutes actually taking up the review in case you have questions with any particular uh, concepts. Okay, so we're gonna start right here. We're gonna solve these right triangles. And so that would be um, the first four questions on the test paper. So let me just go to my uh, lined uh, pages now. So we're gonna do um, example one, side A is 25 and angle B is 61 degrees. So I'm gonna start just by making a quick sketch of that. And again, not to scale, but just something that I can help with the visualization. Okay, so side A is 25, so that's here in our diagram, and angle B is 61 degrees, so that's right there. And so before we continue, we're gonna label the unknown side lengths that we need to find, which are B and C, and also the unknown angle down here, which is A. Okay, and now I'm gonna go ahead and solve the triangle. Now, when we're doing this, of course, we need to remember the three main trig functions. Okay, so this is O over H, A over H, and O over A. So we need to be keeping that in mind while we're doing our um, work here. But I guess the easiest thing to determine right now is angle A, and this is just done by subtraction. So we have 180 degrees minus 90 degrees. So that leaves us with 90 degrees. So if we subtract 61 from it, we'll get um, the angle A measure of 29 degrees. All right. So now what I want to do is solve for the missing side lengths, but I just want to use this given information. So for this angle here, given, the given side is called adjacent, adjacent. So I will be selecting the two trig functions with the A in them. So both cosine and tangent are the trig functions I'll use to find these side lengths. Okay, and again, this is because this given side is adjacent to this angle, so adjacent. Okay, so I'm gonna set up a trig function for the cosine of 61 degrees and one for the tangent of 61 degrees. Okay, now, we go to our triangle. So cosine should be adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent to 61 degrees is 25, and the hypotenuse is labeled C. Tangent should be opposite over adjacent. So here's the angle. The opposite side length is B. The adjacent side length is 25. And now we've got things set up properly. When you're finding the side length and it's in the denominator, you end up using division. But when you're finding the side length in the numerator, you use multiplication. All right, so my two side lengths will be found by doing 25 divided by the cosine of 61. 25 divided by the cosine of 61. Okay, so that's side length C. 
to begin with. Now I have to make sure I round that side length like the given side length. So for side lengths, it's the number of significant digits that's important. Okay, so if this side length has two significant digits, I should write down my answer for C, which is a side length with two significant digits. So here we're picturing the one rounding up, so we will end up with 52. Okay, side length B required multiplication. So 25 multiplied by the tangent of 61. This is also a side length, so we'll be rounding it to two significant digits and we will get 45. Okay, and that matches the answers at the bottom of the uh, handout. So we'll go on to do a second one now. So once again, I will start with a little sketch. Okay, so we got our right triangle. Now let's read the second problem. This time we're given side C and angle A. So always with reference to this triangle here. So I'm gonna put 165 here and 12.8 degrees here on my picture. Like this, okay? And then I label the three unknowns. So this time, it is angle B that is unknown. And the two unknown side lengths are the legs of the triangle, A and B, like that, okay? The labeling has to be just like the uh, one on the handout I gave you. Okay, so now, as you know, we can find the angle just by subtracting 12.8 degrees from 90, and this will give you 77.2 degrees. So that's easy to determine. And now we're going to figure out which two trig functions we'll use to find the missing side lengths. So, for this given angle, what is this side called? Is it called opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? This is definitely called hypotenuse. Okay, it's the side opposite the 90 degree angle. So this means I'll be selecting sine and cosine as my two trig functions. So we're gonna do sine of 12.8 degrees equals, and we'll set that up. And we'll also do cosine of 12.8 degrees equals, and we will set that up. Okay, so sine is O over H. So the opposite side length is called A, and the hypotenuse is 165. So that was O over H. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent to the angle is side B. So we end up with B over 165. The variables are in the numerator, which means use multiplication here. Okay, so all we have to do is take 165 and multiply it by the sine and the cosine of 12.8 degrees. So let's do that, 165 sine 12.8. Okay, so that's side length A. It should be rounded like this side length, so three significant digits. So 36.6. And now we do 165 cosine 12.8 to find this length B, rounded to three significant digits, this is 161. Okay, so those were just a couple of examples of um, solving when you're given one side and um, also one angle. All right, I didn't do an example on the review sheet 
um, of when you are given the side opposite the given angle. So that would be the third and final possibility. Okay, should we try question three? This is solving when you're given two side lengths. Okay, so my triangle first, it's like this. Now let's take a look. Okay, so the two side lengths were given are A and B. So A, 415, and B, 211. So let's put those on our triangle. 415 and 211. And now we label the three unknowns. So side C and angles A and B. Okay, so let's begin by finding the missing side length. This is done with the Pythagorean theorem. So we just have to do 211 squared plus 415 squared is equal to C squared. Plus sign because we're finding the hypotenuse, the longest side. So calculator 211 squared plus 415 squared is, okay, that number. So that's C squared. We need to square root it. That's equal to C right there. It's the longest side. Now we round it to three significant digits because that's how many significant digits we were given for side lengths A and B. So this would be 466. C is 466. Okay, now I'm all set. I'm gonna use a trig function now. I'm gonna use a trig function to find angle A. Okay, I could find angle B first if I want, but I think I'll stick with angle A. So I need to determine which trig function I'm gonna use. I wanna use these sides here because they were given and they are not rounded. Okay, so for this angle, the trig function that would use this side and this side is called tangent. So we have the tangent of the missing angle A is equal to now remember, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So it's 415 over 211. Okay, so I picked tangent because it's the only trig function that doesn't have the hypotenuse, doesn't have the H in it. Okay, I'm going to treat the H side as unknown because I don't want to use this rounded number. Okay, so we're doing opposite over adjacent. And as you know, now when we're finding the angle, we have to use the inverse function. So we want the tangent inverse of 415 over 211. So shift tangent, right? Tangent inverse, 415 over 211. And that's my angle right there. I just have to figure out how to round it. So we go to our rounding chart. When the sides have three significant digits, when the sides have three significant digits, I should round the angle to one decimal place. Okay, so in this case, that would be 63.0 degrees. Okay, and I could set up another trig function to find B. For example, the tangent of B would be 211 over 415. So I can do it that way, or I can just subtract this number from 90 in order to get B. So maybe I'll just show you with the subtraction. Okay, so we do 90 minus 63 and we get 27. We make sure we write it down with one decimal place also. Okay, but what I was saying is the other way to do it is tangent inverse, but it would be 211 over 415. Okay, so that would round to 27.0 when we rounded to the nearest tenth. All right, so that's example three. And let's do example four. Get some more paper going here. Okay, right in here. All right, move that one out of the way. 
Now, one more right triangle, okay? For example, four. So let me get my setup. Just do a quick sketch. Okay, so what are we given in example four? Two side lengths, uh, B and C. So 12.45 and 45.89. So 12.45, 45.89. So what's missing in the triangle? We don't know side A. And then of course, we don't know the angles A and B either. All right, so we're gonna start with the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of A, but make sure we know this is subtraction. Okay, so we're, we're doing A squared is C squared minus B squared. It will be subtraction only um, when you're finding side A or side B, it will be subtraction. You'll only be adding when you're finding the longest side, which is C. Okay, so let's do this. 45.89 squared minus 12.45 squared is this number. Square root it to figure out the length of side A. So this is a side we're working out. These sides have four significant digits. So rounding to four significant digits here is 44.17. Perfect. Now I'm gonna find angle A and I wanna use the two given sides. So for angle A, this side's called adjacent and that one is called hypotenuse. So of course, this means I have to use cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. So the cosine of angle A is 12.45 over 45.89, like this. So then we do the cosine inverse to get the angle. So shift cosine. Every time it's the angle you're calculating in degrees, you have to use the inverse function. So last time I used the fraction button and I could use it here. Remember the other option is a bracket. 12.45 divided by 45.89. That's my angle right there. Now I gotta round it properly. It's the first angle measure. So, we use the chart, okay? The sides have four significant digits. So we go to the left to figure out how to round the angle. We should round it to two decimal places. And so that would be 74.26 degrees. Perfect. And B, is simply 90 degrees minus angle A. Ninety minus the answer. So we get fifteen point seven four degrees for angle B. Okay, if I wanted to use a trig function instead with these two sides, it would be sine opposite hypotenuse. So we would do shift sine and it's 12.45 over 45.89. Okay, so that's an alternate method to figure out the angle. You'd use the sine inverse of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Okay, so examples three and four were examples where you were given two sides. The other um, possibility, of course, is if you were given sides um, A and C, because here we have A and B, here we have B and C. So the only other possible triangle would be if uh, you were given um, A and C. 
So I didn't cover that in the review, but it's certainly covered in my lesson. All right, now we change gears and we go on to look at um, cast rule. So question five is um, using the cast rule. So let's um, have a look at that. So first thing is, you have to remember how this works. Quadrants one, two, three, and four, like this. And the word cast this way. No options there, okay? So that has to be exact. And then we can try to answer our problems. So 5a, determine the quadrant in which the terminal side of theta lies. We want a positive cotangent and a negative sign. A positive cotangent and a negative sign. Now, the other thing we need to remember for the um, rest of this um, review sheet are the three reciprocal functions. We absolutely need to know those three reciprocal functions. So what I mean here, of course, is that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. And cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. Okay, so question five says, cotangent is positive and sine is negative. As soon as you see one of the reciprocal functions, you should change the language of the question. So. Saying that cotangent is positive is the same as saying that tangent is positive. So we want to know for 5a, where is tangent positive and sine negative? So we want tangent positive and at the same time sine negative. So where does that happen here? Well, tangent positive happens here for where the T is and here where A stands for all positive. So tangent is positive in these two quadrants, but of those two quadrants, the only one that will have a negative sign is right here. So the answer to 5A is quadrant three. Okay, 5B. Uh, now we want cotangent and secant, both negative. So cotangent negative is the same as saying you want tangent negative. Secant negative, this is the same as saying you want cosine negative. So we want tangent less than zero and cosine less than zero. So the only place where both tangent and cosine are less than zero will be here because in quadrant two, only sine is positive. Okay, so the answer is quadrant two. Not quadrant one because everything is positive there. Not quadrant three because tangent is positive there. Not quadrant four because cosine is positive there. So only in quadrant two will these two functions be negative. Okay, let's take a look at question six. Now in question six, we're given this information. The secant of theta is equal to negative 1.546. And the question is find theta. Now don't be confused by this notation right here. This is simply saying that theta will be between zero and 360 degrees. So the answers that we write down can include zero and anything um, below 360 degrees. That's all this notation means. Okay, so all we wanna do is figure out theta. All right, find theta. 
if we know it's secant. So first step is secant is no good to us in terms of using our calculator. So the very first thing we do is change this to cosine of theta and we use one over this number. Okay, cosine is the one that's the reciprocal of secant. So first step is that. Second step is we find that acute angle alpha by taking the cosine inverse. But remember the language was use the absolute value. Absolute value. So that means we drop the negative sign. So we're gonna do the cosine inverse of one over positive 1.546. Okay, so remember we had this handout in our lesson. Okay, use the absolute value to determine the first quadrant reference angle alpha. So that's what I'm about to do here. So we have to do shift cosine, shift cosine, and now we want one over 1.546. So that's my alpha right there. Now, how do we round it? The trig function has four significant digits. So the rounding table is here, it's also on your review, okay? When the trig function has four significant digits, we round the angle to two decimal places. So for this example, 49.70 is correctly rounded to two decimal places. Okay, now that we have this calculated, we have to do the next part. Use the cast rule to figure out the quadrants. So how do we do that? We ask the question based on what we were given. We were given a negative secant. So the question could be where is secant negative? But that's the same as asking where is cosine negative? So where is cosine negative? It's negative in quadrants two and three. So our two answers will be in quadrants two and three. What do we do in quadrant two to get alpha, uh, to get theta rather? 180 minus. And in quadrant three, 180 plus. So we have theta is 180 degrees minus 49.70. Oopsie. Yep, yeah, and then theta is 180 degrees plus 49.70. All right, and if you do these um, calculations, you will get 130.30 and 229.70 degrees. And that's consistent with the answers on the bottom of the handout. Okay, so multiple steps, and please, you have to show all of these steps if you expect to get full marks on your test, okay? So first of all, we made it a main trig function. Then we made sure we used a positive value here to find that acute angle alpha. Then we had to figure out the correct quadrants based on the fact that we were given a negative secant value, which is consistent with being given a negative cosine value. All right, that was question six. We're going to do question seven next. So question seven, find theta within one full revolution. Tangent is 0.835 and sine of theta is less than zero. Okay, so what do we have? Tangent of theta is 0.835 and sine of theta is less than zero. Okay, so we 
um, are trying to find theta. So we go through all of the same steps we did in question six in finding that reference angle alpha. Although this time we are not given um, a reciprocal function. So we are given a main function. It's on the calculator. So there will be no one over calculation here. Okay, so we can go right to the step where we do the tangent inverse of this number. Again, compare it to the last one. In the last one, we were not given a function on the calculator, so we had to change it to cosine, and we had to do the one over calculation. This time, it's a main trig function, so there's no one over here. And the other thing is we started with a positive number this time, so we don't have to drop any negative sign in this step. So we simply do shift tangent 0.835. This is our angle. When the trig function has three significant digits, we round the angle to one decimal place. So in this case, that's um, 39.9. Okay, now that we have alpha, it's time to ask the appropriate question. What will the question be? It's based on what we were given. So what we were given here is a positive tangent value, but not only that, we're told that sine should be negative. So the question can read, where is tangent positive, but sine negative. So this will happen in only one quadrant. So this extra information in, in question seven limits our answer so that it will only be in one quadrant. We will get only one answer. So where is tangent positive and sine negative? Where does that happen? Tangent positive here and here but of those two answers, we'll only have a negative sign right here. So quadrant three is the only place where we will have tangent positive and sign negative. So what do we do to find theta in quadrant three? In quadrant three, we're doing 180 plus alpha. So we do 180 plus 39.9 degrees, and that is going to give us um, 219.9 degrees. Okay, so question seven, much like question six, except with the extra information here, we get only one answer, while in question six, we had two answers. Okay, one more question, number eight. So number eight is asking us to find the sine of theta and what we're given is the cotangent of theta is negative 2.604 and we're also told cosine of theta is greater than zero. So again, with this extra information here, we'll get only one angle and then once we have the angle, we should be able to find its sign. Okay, so cotangent, not on the calculator. So we have to change it to tangent. How do we change it to tangent? That's when you do one over. Okay, but in finding the alpha, since it has to be an acute angle, we don't keep the negative sign. So we're doing the tangent inverse of positive one over 2.604 in order to get that reference angle, okay? Tangent inverse of one over 2.604. So there we go, that's our um, alpha. Four significant digits were given for the trig function. So we round the angle to two decimal places. That'll be 
zero, one. Okay, for the alpha. Better if we can remember to keep the whole thing in our calculators though, since our final answer this time isn't going to be an angle, but rather it's sine. So I'm gonna to try to keep uh, all this in my calculator. Okay, now that we have the alpha, we ask the right question. The question should be based on what we were given. We were given a negative cotangent, which is the same as being given a negative tangent, and a positive cosine. So the question is, where is tangent negative, but cosine positive? So where do we have both of those happening? Negative tangent, cosine positive. So cosine is positive here where the C is and here where all are positive. Of those two quadrants, the only one with a negative tangent will be here. So quadrant four is the answer. How do you get the angle in quadrant four? You do 360 minus alpha. Okay, so I have this here. I'm gonna do clear it and do 360 minus the answer. 360 minus the answer, okay? So now I have this, 338.99 degrees. Okay, so that's the uh, angle. Um, and so if this were posed like question seven, where it was just fine theta, we would be done. But this question, remember, actually says find the sine of theta. So all we want to know is what is the sine of 338.99 degrees? Okay, so my angle's here still, so I should just be able to go sine equals. So that's the sine of 338.99 degrees. The sine of 338.99 degrees is a trigonometric function. So it should be rounded like the given trigonometric function to four significant digits. And so it would be negative 0.3585. Okay, just like that. All right, so um, I hope that that helps. And you can see here that um, I'm looking for a lot of detail in terms of the solution of the questions. So please do not just submit to me an answer like this, okay? where I will have no idea how you've obtained that answer. This is particularly important when you're at home and not in my classroom, right? So I, I don't know um, how you've arrived at the answer if you're just going to submit a final answer. I will be unable to give you full marks. So please show me the steps, show me you know, what you're using for alpha. Show me that you're using the cast rule. Show me that you're adjusting alpha uh, and so on. Show me the steps, okay? Your steps don't have to look exactly like mine because, you know, we're all individuals, but I will need to 100% uh, see all of your steps in order to give you full marks. Like a question like this, uh, could be worth, you know, six marks. So if you just give me this answer here, I will be giving you one mark, not six marks. So please justify all of your answers. And I know that's completely different than the quizzes you've been writing on my math lab. So um, when you're doing these unit tests, I need to see all of your work. Okay, thanks a lot. Good luck with the rest of your studying. Have a good day.